Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about what makes a good management team from a perspective of an investor. This is a very, very important topic, and I think it's not talked about enough, so make sure you stick around until the end. My name is Gary Mishuris. I'm the Managing Partner and Chief Investment Officer of Silver Ring Value Partners. I also teach the Value Investing Seminar at the FW Olin Graduate School of Business. So management is really underrated a lot. I think when people start out investing, they t frequently, you know, if at all, fo start focusing on the business. Uh, and maybe the balance sheet and the financials, but management, they don't think about as much. And I think part of it is they don't know how to figure out if they're any good. So I would say the way you want to think about it is a two-dimensional approach. On one dimension, you want to have, you know, competence. So how good are these managers? And we'll talk about what that means. And on the next, you know, another dimension, you want to think about integrity. And by integrity, you know, so what's integrity? Integrity is really, are they going to, you know, treat you as a partner and try to make money together with you? Or are they going to take a much more of a zero sum approach and try to make money at your expense? So <laughs> typically you can tell integrity from, you know, things like how do they page themselves? Usually, if you open up the proxy statement for a U.S. company, for example, you will see, you know, in the compensation discussion section, how they choose to pay themselves. And really, for the most part, they're choosing. Yes, there's a board and there's an independent committee, but it, all too often, the board is very friendly with the management and they're going to bring in some comp consultant and they can justify, you know, almost any package uh, within no a reason, right? And so... To the degree that the CEO has the ability to pay himself unfairly, but instead chooses to pay himself fairly, and by fairly I mean that he only builds net worth in a meaningful way if he adds value for the investors, then I think you can see that that person has integrity and they chose to forego something that would benefit them at your expense to do what's right. So that's the kind of stuff you want to look at in terms of integrity. You also really want to make sure that their alignment is there and that ideally they own a lot of stock directly that they purchase with their own money as opposed to God through, you know, huge option grants that they benefit from whether they deserve them or not. So, you know, if they bought into the business or even better if they are the founder of that business and they own a large stake, chances are your incentives are aligned. And finally, I think on terms of integrity, you know, you really want to think about, does this person just love the money or love the business as well? And it's not that people shouldn't like the money, but if their primary motivator and their only motivator really is money, 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 there is a big chance that they're not going to be treating you as well as they could because they're going to try to make as much money and there's all this temptation for a CEO to take advantage of you as the passive shareholder. On the other hand, if they have intrinsic motivators, they say they're in a business that deals with animals and they love animals and there's, you know, a motivation to try to do a great job to help animals have a better health outcome or something like that. And by the way, they want to get paid fairly for the value they deliver to the shareholders. That's a great combination. So that's integrity. What about competence? Well, competence, you really want to think about it in uh, two parts. One is, are these guys competent in operating the business and that you can measure by looking at how well they've done in terms of um, operating statistics did they grow uh, be uh, better or worse than their uh, competitors are their margins uh, as good or better and so forth you know did they you know take advantage of opportunities that were presented to them and also return capital is a very important metric so what was their return invested capital over time and that leads me into the second thing you want them to be competent about, which is capital allocation. So a CEO gets to redeploy, you know, with you know, tacit approval of the board for the most part, a large amount of capital over, say, a 10-year period. So if you're investing in a business and you're buying it at 10 times earnings or whatnot, that means that over 10 years, a lot of the investment outcome is going to depend on how is the management deploying the capital. And they can basically do large overvalued acquisitions and destroy value, or they can you know, maybe just return capital to you, which is value neutral, or maybe they can actually find ways to create value by being savvy maybe about repurchasing shares below their intrinsic value, or buying really you know, undervalued assets, or even better investing internally in attractive products that have high incremental rates of return. So really, you know, there's no substitute for a track record. Don't listen to what the management says they're going to do. For the most part, focus on what have they done. How well have they operated the business, ideally over a full economic cycle, how well they have deployed capital over many years. So in the ideal world, what you're looking for is a competent management team that knows how to run the business, 
loves the business they're in, uh, they're good capital allocators and proven over time, and they have a lot of integrity and alignment with you as a shareholder, and they're likely to try to grow the pie for everyone, not just worry about getting the biggest slice for themselves. So that's how you assess company management. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.